We're gonna start right here. We're gonna go all the way across the top and then hit the bottom. We have three different categories that we're going to talk about. One is cost value, one is flexibility, and the third is durability. So right here, we have mechanics. What are these? Mechanics, the originals. So this is more of a light duty and we get heavier. And then up down here at the very bottom, we get into like uh, more of a winter and kind of special duty gloves. So right here, there's some mechanics gloves. What do you think about those? Well, I know they fit because they're mine. They're really good gloves. They're really, what I like about them is they dry fast. So if you're working in wet conditions, they're not warm. So don't expect them to keep your hands warm, but they dry fast if you're constantly getting your hands wet. They're nice. Dexterity is awesome, which is why they're called the mechanics gloves. I used to wear them a lot. They're not particularly durable. The fingers wear out fairly quickly. So they're okay for vinyl fencing, but it's still kind of slippery. They're not particularly grippy. It's kind of a fake leather. They're okay for cedar. Uh, they do keep the splinters out pretty well. You can use them on chain link. Uh, I wouldn't suggest them with barbed wire, so this is fabric on the back, so they'll snag and tear. They're not the best for fencing. They are great for dexterity, so it's kind of a, up to the user. How much should one be looking to pay for a set of gloves like this? I think they go for about 20 bucks normally. 20 bucks a pair. But I'm sorry, I didn't introduce who's all here. Of course, you know me. Dragon over here. Yeah, Andrew, yep. And Shamaz. This is Shamaz. Really? I would agree with Andrew. Uh, flexibility, awesome. Durability is probably not gonna be there all the way, but as far as like being hands-on and being able to grab stuff, awesome, 100%. I will throw in, if you do like this style of a glove, the mechanics, the original mechanics are the best I've found. You go with any other brand that look like that, they are always cheaper, chintzier. When we get into these ones, you'll see what I'm talking about. Something to watch out for is this fabric in between the fingers, like in between your webbing, companies will always cheap out on that fabric and that's what'll wear out on you. So stick with the originals if you do like that style. Uh, value, give them a five. Dexterity, eight. Durability, we'll go five. Cost value for me, I think I would be looking more at a, about a four. And the dexterity, I think you're looking at about a six. Durability, I think we're looking at about, about a three. Okay, that's the next one. Mechanics, mechanics, mechanics. Well, these are the fast fit, the difference if you're not aware. These have the Velcro cuff, which I actually find annoying, so that's probably why they came out with these, because I'm not the only one. These don't have a Velcro cuff, they just pull on like a normal glove would. And these ones do have where, I, well actually no, right here. They cheap out on the fabric in between the fingers, so that'll kind of give up on you. But they fit the same, I like them. Durability is a little bit less than those because of that reason. I found them on sale, that's why I have them. Uh, dude, they're super stretchy. Dude. They're like Batman gloves. Those are actually comfortable. Yeah, I would I'd go buy a pair of these. More for cedar and chain link, though. You can play with the nuts and screws a lot better. Uh, I think those go for around $15 average. So value is a little better than these, but they are lighter duty. So we'll give that a six in value. Flexibility is seven. Durability, five. Price is good, so yeah, I'll... Give them a six. Flexibility, six. Okay. Never worn these. Dan wears these. Dan likes these ones. These feel pretty good. Pretty average to the to these as far as fit and dexterity wise. And Duke, I am guessing they last a little longer. And they had they had little little dots. They got dots. Grippy dots. Grippy dots. Yes, dots. you're the very grippy. Well, I like these. Let, no, uh, let me tell you how long I've had this pair of gloves. How long have you had these? I've probably had that pair of gloves for about two and a half weeks, and it's starting to get a little bit of hole. I believe I got a 12 pack for about 40 bucks. So do the math, what is that? $3 or something like that? Pretty good deal. One benefit to these, I don't know about these, these, or these, but I can tell you with these because I'm a big fan. If you have a phone call, you can actually control your phone through the glove without having to take your glove off, if your gloves are clean. Value, pretty good. Seven. Dexterity, seven. Durability, I don't really know for sure, but I'm gonna give them probably a five. They're kind of similar to these other gloves here. It looks like the palm lasts a little longer in these ones, Will. Three or four dollars, affordable. I'd give them a seven. Uh, flexibility, definitely, seven. Durability, I give about a five. Okay. Here we have our next contender, which is Milwaukee. Uh, cut level one. 
So now we're getting into a little bit of a cut resistant glove. Would you put that on? And I'm actually gonna try to, tell me if this hurts, okay? Wait, can I have the other finger? No, you already cut that one off. These Milwaukee gloves I have personal experience with as well as these and these ones because they're actually mine. These are great. Uh, I've yet to wear a palm out on them because I usually lose them. I do have a pair that I melt at the back so don't run a welder or a grinder with them because they melt. I like them a lot. I've had a lot of these types of gloves and they, those are tougher than most. Well, those are nice. They fit really good. They fit like a glove? They fit like a glove. Whoa. Now I see what you did there. Mm -hmm. I'd definitely buy some. Uh, value, I'm gonna give it a six. They're not particularly cheap. For what they are, I'll give them a six. Flexibility, dang. They're, they're right up there. Especially these for my hands. They fit my hands perfectly where there's no excess fabric in the fingers. You can do whatever you need to do in them. Well, the price is good, so I'd give that about a five. Exterior, I'd also give that about a five. Durability, I'd have to go with a seven since he hasn't broken any yet. All right, seems like a pretty fair contender right there. I think that's our best one yet. Another glove that's made by Milwaukee, very comparable to these ones. The only difference is this, this is a cut level five. Well, these ones are too big, so the fit, but I'm sure if they were the right size, they'd be better. Cut resistant gloves are nice. Palm's a little stiff. It's a lot, a lot stiffer than those three, so dexterity is a little less. Oh, and apparently they are, they are also smart swipe. So like these ones, you can run your phone with them. I guess if you need cut resistant gloves, this is an option, but I'm gonna give them a value, not knowing what they actually cost, of around four, because they're expensive. Flexibility, six. Durability, they're probably pretty tough. They usually are six, because they're not leather. So one thing to keep in mind on the cut resistant gloves, even though it says cut resistant, I would not recommend these for doing any sort of barbed wire. I would not recommend them for any sharp edges. What would you envision people using cut resistant well, there's, gloves There's for? a difference between cut resistant and cut proof, of course. Yes. Um, the cut resistance scale changed a few years back, so I really don't know what a five stands for anymore. But that would actually, I think, would be a decent option for sheet metal. Sheet metal work, putting up pole barn, sheet siding, whatever you want to call it, metal siding. But not flaying fish. The next one is a little bit of a sensitive category. Somebody in here is a really big fan. And I think I figured out why. I think it has to do with the guy's mustache. That's a legitimate mustache. It's pretty, pretty killer stash. Uh, these are the Tillman 1414. Uh, these are gloves I came across a few years ago. I like them a lot, especially for the price. They're about $10, depending on where you get them. They're a cowhide palm. They break in awesome. They fit amazing. Very biased on this one, so you just have to deal with that. For the durability and the cost, they're, they're awesome. The value at $10 for a pair of leather gloves that actually fit, because you get to the cheaper gloves leather, cheaper leather gloves, they usually fit like crap. Value, eight. Dexterity, since they are leather, they're not gonna be amazing, but I'll give it a six. And durability, pretty high, seven. <clears throat> I love them, I wear them every single day. I use them for welding, barbed wire, and everything else, and these are the best gloves I've yet to try. So for general industry, for working for general fence industry, there's two opinions right there, straight across the board. Those are a big hit. Definitely, definitely pick up a pair. Okay, there, the next contender is Cayman Gloves. I've never had a pair. They do, they do fit pretty nice. They feel like deer hide, which I don't think. Sheepskin, I think. Uh, look on the. Sheepskin. That's why they're so soft. They're full of lanolin. Those are a pretty nice glove. I'm not really sure what this patch is for. I've never ripped out a glove right there myself, but that's kind of weird. I don't know what that's, I guess you can snap them together. Those do feel, feel pretty nice. I've never used them out in the field yet, but uh, I might just have to go buy a pair. I believe these are around $13 a pair. Uh, value, uh, I guess at 13 bucks a pair, that's not too bad. Um, give it a six. Flexibility is pretty good. Being a leather glove, we'll give it a five. I don't care for this chunky thing on the thumb myself. I don't, except I don't know what that's for. Durability, I've seen other guys wearing them and I'm not impressed at all. They seem like once the leather gets a hole in it, it's just shot, it falls apart, made out of sheep. So they're on the more of the comfort side than the durability side. So I'll give it a three on the durability. A five for the cost, the durability, I'd give them probably a five. Cause I just haven't tried them yet. One thing about a lot of the other contenders, we don't have any other contenders on display here that have it. 
but there's a lot of other manufacturers that do have the, the additional palm protectors here. Cayman does sew theirs in a lot more versus other people. The other people usually just sew the edges, so as soon as it starts coming undone, it just sits there and it's so annoying as soon as it starts coming undone, you just cut it off because it gets in your way all the time. So yeah, absolutely. They do a great job of sewing that, that palm piece on there. And on that, I never find those patches useful. I've never had a pair of gloves that really wears out here, especially here. I mean, maybe on the pad of your thumb that could be useful, but that'd be annoying. But that's why one of the reasons I like these so much is it doesn't have that shenanigans. And that affects your dexterity having them in there and something I avoid personally. Okay, so we didn't have enough gloves. So somebody had to go out to their truck and go get another pair. Carhartt. I'm gonna put this in the same category as these mechanics, the mechanic slip-on. Yeah, they do feel pretty much the same as those. They do look a little tougher. This fabric's a little more rigid. Never tried a pair of Carhartt gloves before, but... They feel pretty nice. So these are mine. I do like them. I've noticed that they are a lot tougher than the rest of the ones I've tried on. I haven't busted out the seams or anything. And they fit really nice. Uh, and they're only about $8, so I like the price on them. Eight dollars a pair is pretty good. I didn't know that's how much they cost. Uh, probably a seven on value for what they are. Flexibility is pretty good. Seven. Durability, according to Mark, I'll give it a six because they're not leather, so they're not going to last like leather glove will. But I wouldn't run a grinder or a welder, of course, in them. I give the cost about a about a six because they were on sale. I forgot to mention that. Uh, durability, I give about a seven because I haven't really messed them up. Flexibility is. Probably about a five. Awesome, right on. Okay, so we went ahead and we finished the top row here. Before we move on to that bottom row, we're gonna go ahead and just kind of recap. All these right here, all the way up until the Tillman's. Great gloves for uh, such as like a gate operator work, uh, anything that you're trying to really grab to get your hands on that's not very big. So if you're doing a lot of gate operator work, look into those uh, and these, and the Carhartt ones. Sorry, I put those in the wrong spot. Fencing work, such as like working with sharp stuff, not razor sharp, but definitely more like barbed wire, smooth wire, ag fence, chain link, stuff kind of like that. You're looking into your leather gloves. Now, let's go to our bottom row. We're gonna go with these and we're gonna go into the Kinkos. These are my gloves. And the thing that I like about them is one, it's made for cold weather. So it's insulated, but also how the cuff how the cuff goes back around your wrist keeps the warm air in there so that way the hand stays nice and warm and the cold air out yeah versus like an open cuff i've had these ones though. i like them i've had other styles other brands make very similar styles they are very warm i do believe they're pigskin if you don't know to wear the pigskin doesn't go all crunchy after it gets wet you wear a leather cowhide glove it gets wet the next day it'll be all crunchy and hard so that's why you want to shoot for pigskin in the winter time they are they are nice gloves i have the exact same set of gloves and I like them. The only thing I don't like about them is how thick they are. It's hard to do anything with if you're playing with nuts and bolts, but other than that, I do like them. Uh, I think the cost, I'm gonna put the cost somewhere around $18. I don't care for the elastic cuffs myself, especially if your hands, take your hands out, you're playing in the snow, hands a little bit damp, trying to get them back on, even dry is kind of a pain. So I prefer this style, those are mine. It's okay, it's okay. So just you, saying, can, you can just go ahead and say to, that. Something to think you're about. Wrong. You can be wrong, it's okay, it happens to all of us. Um, value, they are really tough and they are really warm, they are really good gloves. Flexibility, they're flexible, but they are very bulky, so they're, yeah, they're not a nuts and bolts gate operator glove, but everything else we do, you can get away with it. And durability, they're pretty tough. The back, um, it's cotton, so it's not gonna melt like these would. Value, six. Flexibility, dexterity, uh, five, maybe even a four, four and a half. And durability, Six. The cost, I'll give them about a five. Flexibility, about a five. Durability, I give them a five. All right. Here's its competitor right here. <coughs> we got some more Tillman's 1419Ls. Um, yep, these are mine. These are my choice for the winter gloves. I've got another pair in the truck that are very wore out, but still don't have any holes in them. These are pigskin as well, which is why I chose them. Like I was sitting on these, they don't get all crunchy when they get all wet or after they dry out anyhow. They fit me because they're mine, of course. Which is weird, these are large, something to think about. You might want to try on gloves instead of ordering them. 1419L fit me. 1414M being medium fit me better than the larges. So, 
this glove I use a large that glove over a medium. Maybe it's because there's much more cotton in there to keep your hands warm. It's not cotton, it's warmy stuff. Baby seal fur. Baby seal fur? Well, yeah. it's, maybe it's because there's more fur in there to keep your hands warm. It could be. Here you go, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, you can't go wrong with the brand. They're just a good brand to go with. They hold up. And they feel really comfortable and feel like they'd keep your hands really warm. Okay. Let's hear it. Don't remember how much Give they me cost. some numbers. I think they're about $18. Uh, value is what I continue to buy, so I'm going to give them a seven in value. Flexibility, they're insulated leather gloves, so they're not that flexible, but five. And durability, like I said, I've still got a pair in the truck that I've yet to wear out, so they're pretty durable. Seven. How long have you had them? Since last winter. Ooh. Wore them last winter and then into this winter, and they're the ones I put on every winter day. It's cold enough, so they're pretty tough. That's why if, they make footballs out of pigs. If they made socks, would you have a pair of those too? Tillman socks? Yes. Yeah. That'd be awesome. There's an idea for you. Tillman socks. The cost, I'd give them about a five. Uh, flexibility, a four. And then durability, I'd give them probably about an eight. Let's see what he's talking about. They are pretty warm. Pretty comfortable. I will agree with you. Pretty nice. These are very comparable gloves, but I said just up to the person. I don't care for the elastic cuffs. Dan likes the elastic cuffs, so you got some options, whatever you like. That's what we're all about here. We're all about showing you options. Okay, here is going to be a cold weather glove that is going to be another dipped glove. So it is dipped in some sort of a rubber somehow. I think somebody puts their hand in it and then they they dip it in like a rubber vat, a vat of rubber. Molten rubber. Yeah, they go, for, they go rubber. through employees pretty quick. Yes, yes. The rubber is the only waterproof part on this glove. There you go. Have at it. I have some. I've worn them a lot. They are comfortable. They are warm. Um, hands get all swampy. They, they, they're kind of... I don't like wearing them for extended period of time. I wouldn't wear them all day at work, but quick shovel in the driveway, cleaning the snow off the truck, they're great. Dexterity is really good for what they are for a winter glove that you need to actually be able to move your fingers. It's a good option. So you get like swamp finger when you wear yeah, these? Yeah, get swamp hand. Swamp hand? Yeah. Swamp hand. I've had a pair and I really didn't care for them just because you get swamp hand in them and then your aunt, your fingers start to eventually freeze and that's annoying. So I don't really like them. Okay. Fair enough. Two totally different scenarios here. I'm liking this one. I don't know what you paid for them. I think I got mine around $12, $13. Value, they're pretty good value. I'll give it a six. Uh, dexterity for a winter glove, they're about as good as a dexterity winter glove you get so i'll give that a seven for a winter glove six on an average you know normal glove um durability they're pretty tough for a dipped glove we'll go six we'll go six across the board on these ones they're a good option like i said just wearing them all day they're not they're not great because your hands do get gooey you all got a couple pairs pan. get a couple pairs to rotate through they might be a good option and i will give these a three across the board just because i really don't care for them Fair enough. Two totally different reviews on that one. These are these are Neo Gear Pro gloves. I, had, I haven't had a pair of these for like a long time. And when I had my last pair, I loved them. These are waterproof, windproof. The idea is, is that you want to get them tight. So that way your hand stays warmer because the glove is sucking to your hand. You made a neoprene, like a diver suit. So they're like a muck boot for your hand. Made a neoprene. But I've had a pair, I, I've worn them ice fishing. That's what I use them for. I've never used them to work in. I'm betting they're not very tough. So yeah, these are pretty good. They're comfy. Dexterity feels pretty good. I don't know that I'd work in them. They don't look too tough, but maybe I could be wrong. I have a pair of these at home as well for ice fishing. And I like them. I only use them for ice fishing just because I can grab onto the fish and it won't get away. But yeah, I, I really like my gloves. Okay, let's, let's hear it. I think I paid about $35 for Holy this moly. Well, that's going to drop it down on the value, in my opinion. I'm going to give them a four on value, because what they are, they're completely waterproof. And I don't, none of these other gloves are completely waterproof. Dexterity, six. They're very dexterous. And durability is going to be way down there, too. I don't know if they're for fencing. I'm not sure what I'd use them for at the job, but they have their place elsewhere, ice fishing. Uh, the cost, I would probably give three and a half, since you said they were really expensive. Okay. Durability, uh, I'd give them about a five, because I haven't really messed up mine yet and flex it would be probably about a six so that's an interesting review on these ones because i have them and i have more for work but 
I'm interested and glad to hear their reviews because they're saying it's more going to be more of a hobby kind of glove and a wintertime fun sport or sport fun having one of those kind of gloves. It's more of a good wintertime outside of work glove. Okay, here's another glove. I like these for concrete because I hate touching concrete and how concrete, if you're touching it with your bare hands, the concrete just sucks the moisture right out of your hands. They're fully dipped all the way up to yonder. Yes, yes, yes. Never had a pair. I'm betting my hands get swampy in these too. They fit pretty good. That's kind of weird they're an extra large. I'd hate to see what a medium felt like. So if you buy these, size up. I don't know, yeah, that'd be good for concrete or something you just don't want your hands in, or wet weather, I suppose. Now, I do want to point out that there is, it's not just a rubber on the inside. There is a little bit of a fabric liner there. So there is a barrier between your hand and the rubber. I kind of like these because I'd grab these for gloves I really wouldn't care about getting dirty with concrete or something really nasty. So anything, really good too. anything you get on your hands, you can always wash them underneath the garden hose or whatever you have. Now, spoiler alert, we don't have them out here, but they also do make a insulated glove of this version as well for wintertime. Uh -huh. All right, have your way with them. Uh -huh. Let's hear it. Let's hear all the negativeness. I think last time I got a pair, they were going for, a, well, let's put them in the $12 range. Okay, so value, I'll give them a five. They look like a cheap glove, but they are better. They're a little more rigid due to the rubber all the way around the glove than these gloves. So flexibility, I think I was giving these a seven or eight. We'll go six. Durability, they look they look like they're pretty tough, This whatever this rubber is. We'll go six on those. I wouldn't want to wear them all day. I bet you get swamp hand on those too, but for, for their purpose, they'd probably be pretty awesome. I would give these about a five all the way across the board. The cost, it's not bad. Okay. Uh, flexibility, it's pretty good. And then durability, I'm not really sure because I haven't worn them, but they seem like they would hold up for a little while. Fair enough, fair enough. I've had a pair of these for about like four or five years and I still haven't worn them out. So they are very durable. Um, great glove all around, great glove, great chemical glove as well. So if you're washing parts and you're getting your hands into chemicals that you don't want your hands to be in, you need that protective barrier, absolutely, 100% right there. Okay, so that's kind of that for that. And then we have our own special category of like boxing gloves right here. If your company allows boxing at work, you're going to want to get one of these sets. Um, our company doesn't, but we're still going to go ahead and rate them. Yep, these are my choice for boxing. These are my gloves. Past life, this is what I had to wear. It's required to wear. These are cut five, I'm pretty sure. I think that's the old cut five, so these are extremely cut resistant. I could be wrong on that. Impact resistant. You smash your hand with something heavy, it's still going to smash your hand, but if you slip on a wrench or something and you punch the wall or something else, they're definitely going to help. This fabric is crazy tough. It's not leather, synthetic, similar to the mechanics. Dexterity is not great, as you can see there, but they do break in. Is that is that from like another planet? Wait, I think it's it... made out of Superman's cape, actually. They're running low on it. It wasn't a very big cape. Uh, oil field companies require gloves like this. Pretty much all oil field companies require gloves like this, so that's... Oil and power, actually, I do believe. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I think so. I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure there's other industries that would find that useful, laying br uh, brick or pipe fitting or heavy, you know, steel industry. I've used a lot of these types of gloves in my past life, and these are the ones I landed on and I actually liked. But if this is what you're looking for, these are a good option. I think these go for around $50, $40, $50, so they are pretty pricey. So a value of, we'll give it a five, because they are really, really tough. I never wore a pair out. I usually lost them, or, or they just got so nasty that I didn't want to wear them anymore. Flexibility is not great. We'll give it a four. They, they do break in. Your fingers can bend a lot more than a lot of gloves, and when it gets cold, this rubber does get kind of stiff. Not terribly stiff, but you know it. Durability is an eight, nine even. They're really tough gloves. That's more of like a silicone, silicone rubber. Silicone rubber, yeah. And I've had some where that gets rock hard. Like you can't even wear them in the Oh, wintertime. absolutely. And that, that's, a very, yeah. that's a very valid point to think about that. For the cost, I would probably have to give them about a four. Flexibility, I'd probably just give them four as well. And durability, I'd probably give them a seven. So I've never seen them before and I've never had to wear them. But if I was in the market, I think I would be looking for a pair of these. I honestly do. They're not bad at all. All right, here's another set. These are none of our gloves. These came from another guy. And they are Magid T-Rex gloves. They're insulated for winter and impact resistant. They're pretty similar to these ones here, a little more fluffy. 
And I think these said they were cut five as well. Oh, so I, those are impact resistant and cut resistant. Yeah. I'm betting I get swamp hand just like those. It feels rubbery enough that it wouldn't get crunchy and being a cold weather glove, you shouldn't get crunchy. They're way too big for me, but I'll bet you they got the right size. They fit pretty good. Seemed like a pretty good option if you had to wear the impact and wintertime glove for sure. I feel like really warm gloves. Uh, they fit well. I like them. I might even go get me a pair. All right. Have your way with them. Let's hear it. Let's hear all the negative comments. We don't know what they cost. I'm guessing... I'm going to put them up in the $50 range. Really? I was going to say 30 35 But if they're 50 then then obviously the value is coming down. Being cut resistant and impact is going to make them go up. So the value will just will be nice if we give them a 6. Flexibility for an impact glove, winter impact glove especially. Overall rating 6, but for what they are, I'd give them a 7 or 8. Uh, durability, they look fairly tough, and if they're cut resistant, they have to be tough. So they're probably a 7 on their durability. Let's hear it. Cost... I'd give them about a five. Flexibility, I'd give them about a six. And durability, I'm going to say five. Okay. So, like Andrew said here, and like Mark said, good wintertime option, cut resistant and impact resistant. That's, that's a lot of safeness right there in your hands. Compared to all these other gloves, we are totally in a different category here than we were anywhere else across the board. And here's our last pair. It's a contender, same manufacturer as these ones. I think uh, it's just the waterproof version of it, basically. Oh, yeah, okay. So, so those are more of a winter version. So we're going to call these a summer version, and we're going to call these a wintertime version. So these, this would be very comparable to this. Also, my, my gloves. So I know they're tough. They're the same fabric as those. They have these cool little grippy dots, though. Um, yeah, these are their barrier. These, so these are the waterproof ones. They're completely waterproof up to up to here because I'm pretty sure the cuff's neoprene. Dexterity's pretty good for what they are. Same as the other ones. So hold on, you said that you thought you would get swamp hand in these ones. Do you oh think, yes. Do yeah. you think you'd get swamp hand in those? You do get the swamp hand in these. Um, and if you have to wash them, which oil field you had to wash them, so that, that was the bad part. The inside would get wet and it'd stay that way for a very long time unless you had glove dryers, which it did. Yeah, anytime you get a waterproof glove and Something to watch out for when you're buying waterproof gloves. A lot of times you have the outer glove itself, and then you have a liner, and then you have an insulator, and none of those are actually attached to the exterior. So you take your hand out, and the whole shebang comes out with your hand, and you have your guts of your glove inside out. These don't do that. So that's something nice about these. That is so annoying when something like that happens because it, that is the first thing to destroy a good pair of gloves. Yeah, and you take 30 minutes putting it all back together. Usually I throw them away, mm -hmm. and I never buy them ever again. Yep. I was, that's what I like. If they're large, I would definitely size up. They feel really stout, so I'm gonna have to go with that. I can't say anything more about them because I can't try them on. Can't get your hand in there? No. Oh man, they are not stretchy at all. No. So yeah, this rubber right here, I feel is a little bit softer than this rubber. In the cold weather, I think this is gonna have more give. So you, that's really gonna restrain your fingers from being able to move a lot. But I think with this being more silicone based, your hands are actually gonna be able to move quite a bit. There's not a ton of insulation in there like Andrew is saying, but I think it's still a great option for a cold weather glove. One thing maybe to consider if you were gonna look into something like this is going bigger on the glove and then going with a secondary liner, such as like a cotton glove to get yourself some more insulation. What's the value on that thing? Value, they're pretty pricey. I think these are 50 somewhere, to, somewhere in there. It's hard to rate against these other gloves because it's a totally different class of gloves. For what these are, the value is pretty good because there's much more expensive versions of them. Value of seven. Against these gloves, you can't compete, so four. Dexterity, kind of the same vote. Dexterity is different because they're just a different glove, but dexterity overall, I'll just give it a three. They're pretty bad. Durability, they're extremely durable, just like the yellow ones. It's their, whatever they make of this palm out of is pretty, pretty good stuff. Durability, seven, eight even. They're going to melt, so it's like any of these other gloves that aren't leather, the, the dots fall off. If I was in the market for an impact resistant glove and a cut resistant glove and wintertime, I think I would definitely be looking for a pair like this. For the cost value, they're pretty stinking expensive, so I'd want them to last a while, and I think it's there. So I think I'd be going for about a seven for a cost value. Uh, flexibility, cold weather glove, I'm probably gonna go with about a three. And the durability, I'm gonna go with an eight. I think, that's what I think. All right, so, from us, what do you wear? What's your choice? Tillman 1414. These ones, when necessary, but 80% of the time. Those are my go-tos right there.
it's winter time, uh, I'm gonna be reaching for those. Oh, sorry, yeah. There's my winter glove. These are my go-to all-time gloves, and I would have to say those are my main two I wear during the winter. So there you have it. You can cut down on going to the glove aisle at your local store, and which one do I want to try today? I personally have all these gloves at home, these exact ones, and don't wear any of them. Hardly ever, because these are what I've gone to. So I'll save you the hassle. I, I have these at home too, and that's all I ever wear. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let us know what you guys prefer. If we missed, if we missed a big glove, if there's something out there that's better than all this stuff, let us know. Tell us in the comments. Dan with SWI. Andrew. Mark. We are Wyoming's Friends Company, and you have a good dang day.